Custom items are finally here in Fortnite Creative and UEFN and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can actually make them from scratch. Stuff like how to make them spin or how to detect when they're equipped and other things like that. So let's just get to it. Now here I am in a completely uh, blank UEFN project and basically the thing you need to know is that custom items utilize scene graph okay. You can't make custom items in the old 1.0 Fortnite creative. Sorry for all you 1.0 people. It's it's a UEFN only since it relies on seeing graph to work. But essentially, if you want to enable custom items in your game, first thing, go into project up here, then go into project settings and scroll down. And then in here, you want to enable inventory system, which is the new inventory system. Uh, once you enable that, it should be good. And then I think it will automatically enable the experimental options I did, which are just extra things you can use. Now, once you have that done, you're good to go. Now, like I said, custom items rely on scene graph to work. So I highly recommend learning how scene graph works if you want to really get into depth with custom items and later on in the future with like custom player characters, vehicles, weapons, etc, etc. Scene graph is going to be very important. But just to get you started, here's a small explanation on how scene graph functions. Scene graph relies on entities and components. Entities are like a box and components are things you put into the box to make it do things. If you think of like an ordinary Fortnite creative device, those have very set in stone things they have they have to do. They're very arbitrary, but scene graph is a very different where you'll be able to just make your own functionality by yourself using different components. So for example, if you want to make an item and you need an entity, and then you need to include different kinds of components. So an item component will make it so that an item, item details would give it like you can give it a title and description. Item icon would give it the icon. So it's in your inventory, you'll have an icon that displays. And then the mesh component is what it looks like when you're either holding it or dropped. Right now it's only dropped, but I'm going to guess in the future they're going to add holding and everything. But it's only dropped right now, so just keep that in mind. And actually make a custom item. Right now you need to make an entity prefab. Now I don't know if in the future ever going to add like a custom item thing so you can add it to item grantors or item spawners or stuff like that. Right now you have to do it straight up in a scene graph. So how you do it is you just want to right click. You want to go up to entity prefab definition right here and you can make it right here to be our custom item for a random example and let me go into it we have our outliner here which is our prefab uh, scene graph outliner right here that's just a hierarchy of our scene graph and then we have our details panel where we can add our opponents for each entity there's a world thing right here this is known as the simulation entity this is like the entire world and then everything from the simulation entity uh, like this thing right here which is our custom item entity is a child prefab of the simulation entity now when I say prefab you might be thinking of all oh, the Fortnite prefabs but it's not it's a completely different thing this is the word they use once you click here on the custom item, uh, right on this one, not the world, but this one. If you go to the details, you now see that there's an option to add a component. Now, that's very important because if you want to actually add functionality to our custom item, you want to use this. Now, later on, uh, you can add functionality through like verse components. Uh, but for now, the Epic have provided a bunch of default components you can use. So if I just click this, uh, you can see the whole list of things. These are all the older components that are already in the scene graph. Or to make a item, uh, it's, it's fundamental that we have the fort inventory component. It's like the basic thing. Now, all of these up here, like the ammo, build, collectibles, currencies, harvest tool, resources, trap and weapon hotbar. All of these are subclasses of this right here. So this is like the basic thing you need. But if let's say if you only want our custom item to be a custom currency or a custom resource and only appear in the resource tab inside of your inventory uh, you want to use this instead but i'm just going to use the fort inventory components i'll add that in right there now once we have this uh we also might want the the fort item pickup component this will let our item be picked up and dropped also future me from the future i didn't actually add it here you, you should probably add it not like i did with not adding it so just add it to the rest of the components next thing we want is our item component down here and you're going to see that it's going to have a little category all you want to do is just click this element and add it in there and that's it next thing you probably want is an items detail component which allows us to have a details for items so inside of here you can add your name of your item your description and your short description so that can be whatever you want whatever you want then again the next thing we could add is an item icon which is the icon for the item and as you can see we need to add an icon um i don't know what to add i think i'll make a cube i'll just make a cube uh, so we'll add a cube icon in our details i would do cube item this would be our description so it's the it's a cube not far to understand further and then our short description i think this displays when you're hovering over the item when you're about to pick it up so i'm just gonna put in cube item i can't exactly remember but i think that's what that does we'll see you later anyways now the last thing you probably might need is a mesh component um so we'll go into here add a mesh component and this will actually give our thing an appearance so when we drop our item down and this is what it'll look like when it's dropped and this is gonna be our mesh component right here i would just drag it up cube i might shrink it down a little bit there we go and, and this will be what our item will look like. then inside of this cube I, I do recommend actually going inside of here and turning off collidable because uh when you drop your item 
if you have collision on, your player will be hit by it and it'll be all weird and it'll be all funky. I recommend turning that off so it'll work better. Okay, right now it's important to note that if you want to add like stuff like rarities, abilities that are just built in on the components and stuff like that, uh, those are not out right now, but Epic are working on components that allow you to use that. Stuff like stack size and other things that are just been leaked. But right now we can only really do this and also worse stuff if you want to add functionality to reverse. I think you can, you could, can change the stack size to reverse right now, but this should be coming out. Like I think Epic said the next few few weeks, few months, uh, just, just over time really. But anyways, once we've done this, um, all we have to do is just save and then we'll go back out here. And the simplest thing we can do is we'll just, just drag it out into our world. And this is our custom item here. Now, um, from what I know, you can't put in item grunters or item spawners. So you just have to place it somewhere or either give it to the player through reverse. So yeah, that's basically, we'll just leave it there and then I'll just stun the session and we'll see how it, you know, it looks. And now if I actually go into game, it should be working. So if I walk up to it, you can now see it now says cube item. But anyways, um, if I pick it up now, you should see now it should go into my inventory. And as you can see, I have the description with common cube item. It's a cube, but I don't understand. And I believe that later in the future, Epic are going to be adding the functionality to uh, you know, make rarities, etc, etc. So right now it's only, you can only do it with, uh, I dropped the item as well. There we go. I don't know why it has collision. I gotta be honest. I think the mesh resets when you, when you change it i don't know to be honest i don't know why it's so big now there's obviously gonna be a few bugs okay it's experimental mode so it's gonna be there's gonna be a few bugs just keep that in mind um what i've also noticed is that if you drop it and then you spam drop item it just it just it just flies around like this <laughs> it just flies around so yeah uh, this there's, 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 again there's a few bugs it is what it is but it, it's pretty cool nonetheless now let's say if i didn't want to use a default cube and icon let's say if i wanted to use a custom icon and a custom mesh first things first you want to find what you want and import it do a Fan. All right, so I've imported my custom image and my, my meshes. Um, yeah, I think you can understand what I'm going for here. But anyways, once you've imported everything and you have your, your icon image and your, your static mesh, it's important that when you import custom meshes for scene graph, you want to build your verse code because then it'll actually be inside the uh, your verse asset file. So you can actually use it in scene graph. So next step is that I'm just going to use my already made custom item thing. And I'm going to go into here and I'm going to change the item tell to cat. And it's going to be the cat. Look how cool. And then... The there we go, perfect. And uh, our icon, we're gonna set to a we'll do cat image in there, pretty good. And then finally for our mesh, and we're gonna get rid of the cube because we don't need it anymore. And we're gonna go components and we're gonna grab our mesh right here. And then we're gonna grab our specific mesh, which is our cat, and we'll add them in. There we go. Also, this cat is a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna go into uh here and I'm just gonna shrink him down a little bit. A little, little bit so you'll fit the size correctly. You can see now the hitbox of this guy is a little bit weird. Uh, I have to get inside of him. Alright, okay, I re-import the cat. Uh, would you look at that? I can now see the interact thing with cat, and if I press square, I can now pick the cat. And it's in my inventory. Cat. Pretty crazy. And then if I click the little drop button, would you look at that? It works. Yeah, that's another issue. The icon just breaks completely. Um, there seems to be a few issues with dropping it and repicking it up. I don't think it, those are a bit broken right now, uh, but it should be okay-ish um, to just work around with experiments for like you know early things. Pretty fun stuff right there. And also, by the way, I, I completely forgot to mention this. There's a whole new UI for uh, these new custom things. So if you look in here, there's a whole new UI, and I'm pretty sure they've changed this probably because this is what the UI is going to look like in chapter six or seven. I mean, so it's going to look uh, like that and i think this supports a uh, custom item so if you have a custom resources currencies ammo stuff like that uh you can use them all right so the next thing i want to do is that i want to make this cat spin okay so when it's on the ground right now the cat is sitting there doing nothing but i want him to spin so i want him to do a 360 degree spin and keep spinning now the way we actually do this is the same way you'd normally do with it in scene graph and you'd use keyframe to movement so inside of our component all we got to do is we just gotta i'm just close all this and I'm just going to go into my components and I'm just going to go down to keyframe to move mesh right here down here keyframe movement components and we're just going to add that in there we're not going to have to do anything to it but we're going to have to make our own custom verse keyframe movement manager component we'll do like right now so what we're just going to do is we're going to diverse uh, we're going to go to verse explorer and we're just going to right click this and we're going to add new verse while the project now this one we're going to make a scene graph component and this will be known as our keyframe movement cycle and that should do like that now, once it's made uh, you just want to click on it so I just want to here 
there we go and i'll open up vs code i'm just going to remove the comments because i don't like them also just remove this editable as well because we don't need it and literally all we're going to do inside of here is we're just going to play an animation now this is a component we can actually add inside of our custom item and this will just basically add the functionality of spinning it around it's that's all it's going to do now literally all we have to do is we're just go into here and we'll make an editable there's going to be a variable which is going to be an array called keyframes and this is going to be an array so we'll do the brackets and then inside of here we want to type so we're going to go keyframed underscore min underscore da and we'll equal this to an array like this now this is going to give me an error because i think i have to add in a few uh, modules so we'll do using i think the first thing we need is slash first.org then we then we do scene graph slash keyframed movement like that and it should work like that and we also might want using slash first.org uh spatial map and down here in on begin simulation i'm just going to go to the current you know don't really need it unless you want to test things what we want to do is what we want we want to find the keyframe movement components and then we want to play uh, our keyframes inside of it so we'll actually do our keyframes we make in our in our editable array our editable array is a, an array of keyframe delta movements um or, or keyframed movement delta so in here we're just going to type if if kfm is equal to entity get component sorry that should be dot this is just getting the entity which is going to be our custom item and then we're going to get the components that's specifically inside the custom item which is our keyframe so we're going to find uh keyframe moving component like that and then we want to set our keyframes to our array of keyframes so we're just going to do um kfm dot set keyframes at two our keyframes which is our array up there and we're going to also need another thing which is our playback mode now to actually get our playback mode we're just going to make a very Variable here called playback mode and this is going to be equal to keyframe movement playback mode for this one i'm going to use loop because this is going to simply just spin it um you can also have another one called one shot which does it once and ends and you also have uh i believe ping pong which goes forward and back so it goes to forward to the end and then from the end thing so it goes back and forth but since we just want to spin it we're just going to use loop because we're going to loop it back to start and the reset and it should, should work pretty fine and then we're also just going to copy this and then we're just going to paste it here as the playback mode there we go then of course down here again we're going to add in our playback mode which is the thing we just made up there and that's going to work and now we can actually use our keyframe movement so we'll just we'll just save this then back inside of here we go into custom item and then we'll add in our new verse components that we just made to be right here it's called keyframe movement cycle and we add that and as you can see now we have a bunch of we have an array of keyframes let's move this a little bit there we go now um to actually make our keyframes we'll just uh, well, well we need to first add our keyframes so we'll just add a keyframe here and it's going to make an element of an array which is going to store this keyframe all we want is maybe we want to maybe want to spin it every like actually i'll, I'll make this zero this will be the the, the translation and i'll make another key we'll sp take two seconds to spin or maybe and then we'll have rotation we're just going to make it so it rotates on the uh yellow i think and we just check uh which one is it honestly can't remember swarm if i were to spin this guy okay, yeah it's the middle one it's the middle one we want to use so uh we want to use this and we do 360 like that or 389 no we'll do 300 okay we'll do 90 degrees it'll change 90 and if i look at here it'll just go to 90 and i would just do that four times because it's i don't know what's happening it should work so it's 90 then 90 90 270 and then we do another d and it, that should that should do it um i don't know why but if i go higher than 90 it doesn't work um so i'm just gonna do nine and then since i want it to be three seconds i'll just do like 0 0.5 i'll be more like two seconds 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and that should again that should just come back zero so it should work fine when it loops so then that will play through our keyframes when we spawn it in now okay the very very last thing we need to do is let's go back in our verse code and we just have to add in kfm.play so it actually will play our animation when it spawns in like that also i'd recommend um maybe making an on end simulation thing down here that looks kind of like this and just ending it when end simulating because then it won't uh break it should stop i think i have to do this again hold on there we go just do something like that and then i'll stop it when it ends simulation the way scene graph works is that you need to like you have to clean up after you do something so if let's say this item is gone we have to stop the thing otherwise we'll have memory leaks which is not very good because then that can cause crashes so we don't want that to happen so and we're going to end what we do which is uh, to stop do that i forgot i need to put this four because it won't actually work like that okay with all that made i'm just going to push my changes and it should work now would you look at that it's so beautiful it's spinning around <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's pretty fun i think like i don't, I don't know if it breaks by walking to it uh but no look the cat's spinning around now if i pick it up um it should go in my inventory and if i drop them again it should keep spinning so yeah there we go perfect that's how you make it spin and of course you can also scale it up scale it down 
Uh, make it bob up, up, bob up and down, whatever it wants. All right, future me from the future here. When I was recording this video, the next part I tried was granting items straight to the player because if you didn't know, Epic actually exposed a lot of items inside of Verse, so you'd be able to grant items directly in Verse now to the player and detect if the player has those certain items in their inventory. So I tried to make a system where you could grant like an uh, assault rifle and an only shotgun and also the cat as well, but it ended up not working. I got like an infinite loop verse error. So if anybody has any solutions on how it actually works, please let me know. But uh, on the screen right now is the code that didn't work. Now when I say didn't work, it could just be because Epic didn't fix a bug or something. Or it's just because the code's wrong. I don't know. But if anybody has any solutions, please let me know. Alright, I want to add some functionality to this little cat. Because right now he doesn't really do much. And I want to make it so we'd be able to detect if the player is actually holding the cat, which is very important. So to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go up to here in content. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to create a new verse file. And we're going to make a new component. And this is going to be our custom. Cat. And I must, and this is this is where we're gonna put all of our uh, all of our stuff for our cat. Rose was created. Okay, inside of our custom cat component, I'm just gonna get rid of all the comments. And this is gonna be a, a, an actual first component that's gonna go inside of our scene graph. All right, so if we wanted to add like something like we can detect when a player is holding an item or the or holding our custom item, uh, we're gonna use this custom component and we're gonna add this code in. We're gonna do an if item component, which is gonna be our item component inside of our entity. So we're gonna get the entity get components component, and we're gonna do add uh, item component inside of it. So this is gonna grab the item components inside of the uh, our entity. Then once we've done this. Oh, sorry, it's terribly. Uh, uh, it's not gonna work because we need to do the itemization thing as usual. So use it. Unreal Engine. So call again, itemization. Itemization. How do you spell it? You guys spelled that wrong. Oh, unrealengine.com. There we go. And now we can actually use it. Now then, in here, I'm gonna make a loop. And now this loop, okay, it's gonna work. Our so if um item component, the one I just made, and, the, and if we hover over item components, we're just going to the digest. You can see that uh in here we're gonna use is item equipped. Oops, sorry. <laughs> we're gonna use is item equipped. Yep. And we're going to use that instead of here to detect is the item equipped. Now we'll just do that. Now this should either do true or false. So I'm pretty sure if I just print in here, this is going to let us know if the item equipped. Uh, we can do else uh, print item is not equipped. And then to make sure this loop doesn't bug out, we'll just add a sleep for zero point like that. There we go. Now also what we might add is before this loop even starts, we're going to add a check to make sure item component is actually uh, simulating because again, memory leaks. So we have to make sure that we don't have a memory leak. So we're just going to add right before it. We're going to add something like uh, if item component and we're going to do something called is simulating and I'll just add a bracket and I will do a not right before it because then uh, it's going to be the opposite and we'll just break it we'll just break the loop so if the if the uh, item component is not simulating it's going to break the loop and now with that done uh, we'll just compile it and save it this will allow us to, to detect if we're holding the item or not then inside of our custom item then we can just go into components and we'll find our cat component which should be in here's custom there it is right there custom cat component I'll just add that and now it's inside of our, our scene graph and that's Gonna, it's gonna get all the worst behavior. I'm just gonna build my verse code and then I'm gonna push changes. So now uh, in game, our cat, uh, you can already see it all doing all the things at the top. Right now, I don't have my cat equipped. Uh, my cat is currently on the ground spinning over there. Again, it's not going to, you know, it's gonna say I'm not equipped because I still don't have the item actually equipped. Once I press R1, as you can see now, I have my item equipped and it's gonna say item is equipped. And I can swap between them, and, I can, and then I can detect if it's if it's equipped or not. I can basically use that to uh, detect if the um or like enable and disable different kinds of logic does something, enables a button that I can press, anything like that. You can use this to do that, which is pretty cool. Basically, it allows functionality for the item. Alright, so I'm gonna call it there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, these are just some of the basic stuff. I will be making more videos about this because this is kind of fun. Um, as more information comes out and more dots, I hope this gives you a bit more info on. Uh, uh, the how custom items will work and how you can use them basically and uh, some local cool tricks you can do that's what it's i hope you enjoy the video remember to like subscribe use my code in the fortnite shop i can do all the members of the channel for your continued support and also watch all these videos for more of my tutorials that's what it's i'll still around